Hey, hey, another tier list I wanted to do. I know, we won't go too crazy with these things. We're just going to do two for now. Um, I also wanted to look at spells coming into Warhammer 3 and do a quick tier list for the lores of magic post-patch 1.1. Now, who knows what will change in the future or when the other lores actually get implemented and we can kind of experiment around them some more. So some of it's going off memory from Warhammer 2, some of it's going off with the changes that we've seen in Warhammer 3. I'm um, trying to get a tier list for how the spells are going to function. Right? Right. Anyway, let's get into it. This is going to be a little bit more of bouncing between uh, the in-game stuff and the out-of-game stuff. Sorry, didn't realize my camera was going from there. Boop. Lovely. So starting off, the lore of Yen. I've been seeing it a lot on Cathay recently. There's a bit of debate about Lore of Yen versus Lore of Yang, which I guess we'll figure out here. Storm of Shadows is a speed spell. I personally don't think it's very good. Um, here's the problem with it. I'm talking about the lore. I'm not just talking about the Dragon-Blooded Shugenin Lord, who currently is very broken. Um, she has this item, the, the an amulet that lets her recharge more Winds of Magic than she spends. It's bullshit, it's broken. And I don't expect it will be in the game for very much longer in the balance cycle. Um, so Storm of Shadows I'm getting seen a lot right now. Just to spam it to get more Winds of Magic in the late game. I have not been seeing it used overly well. And I don't think a 45% slow is super worth it on a single target personally. Um, for the use of Winds of Magic. But that's just me. I don't personally think it's super good. It's fine. Cloak of Jet is okay. It's a niche spell. It's fine. It'd be a problem if there was other issues. Blossom Wind, I just have not seen a lot of, honestly, in the meta right now. Uh, it can take a while to cast. It's not that expensive. It does okay damage, so it could be fine. I haven't seen too much of it. It could be fine. Not super sure. Missile Mirror is niche, but very, very useful. Talons of the Night is an extremely useful Vortex spell. And Ancestral Warriors is a useful summon. Lore of Yin overall is pretty damn good and that's why on our photoshop a uh, little tier list thing here we will start off with the lore of yin i'm gonna put it pretty solidly in a tier lore of yin is solid not broken just solid s tier is like i expect it to get nerfed right so a tier is as good as a lore can get honestly without needing nerfs it's foot it's good it's good it's fine Next is the Lore of Yang. The, the Lore of Yang, it's currently, in my opinion, as good as the Lore of Yin. Oh, because of one spell, Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath is an insane spell. Super low mana cost, talking about the Dragon Bowdy Shugan and Lord again. Again, I can't talk about them as an entire lore, which is gonna hurt the Lore of Yang badly. But this was a very high damage spell with a low cooldown, an extremely fast cast, does a ton of damage. And you could spam it over and over again to get the infinite mana regen back, so you could spam it literally until the end of time. Um, that being said, I'm talking about the lore, not just that lord. And without that lord, lord, the lore of Yang suffers violently. Constellation of the Dragon is okay, but it's very expensive and, and multiplayer. This is a lot about multiplayer. It's pretty easy to dodge. Pretty easy. Stone Ground Stand sucks. Wall of a New Fire, in my opinion, sucks. It's super slow, so easy to dodge, and does very little damage. Um, it sucks. Might of Heaven and Earth, in my opinion, is terrible. Flaming magical attacks on a roster that already has pretty decent access to magical attacks, but even without it, you'd have to overcast it to make it AoE. Um, and then it's 20 Winds of Magic, so it's a single target spell. It's just, it's just pure, it's Flaming Sword of Ruin, but much worse. And then Jade Shield. It's nice for a cheap spell, it's 44% damage resist, but it's just really situational and in my opinion not that great um, overall. So this is basically the lore of Dragon Breath, and without the Shugi Lord, it would suffer badly. So, taking you back to the Photoshop, I think the lore of Yang would be C tier. Because um, even without the Shugi Lord, I mean the Dragon Breath spell is okay, a Constellation of Dragons is, is okay. But they're all very much boosted by having that lord in the game. So Lord of Yang is down there. Still good for what we need it to be. But it's not perfect. Um, lore of Tempest. I've seen a lot more of Gust of True fight, Flight recently. I'm personally still not a believer in it, but it's it's good. It's fine. It's only four wins of magic, so that's pretty good. 
Hailstorm is a decent little spell to clear out some stuff. Not a whole lot to say about it. Swiftwing sucks ass. Biting, wing, Biting Wind is pretty fine in campaign. Even in campaign, it's not that good. And online, it struggles to get its value back. Hawks, Hawks of Miska suck ass, and Blizzard kind of sucks. It's very expensive. It does okay. In campaign, it's a good spell. Online, a lot of people dodge it, but even then, it's a lot of points of magic to throw out there for that. Um, not a whole lot to say about Lord of, Lore of Tempest. I'm not very sold on it. I mean, I'm tempted to put it in C tier, but I honestly think the Lore of Yang is just slightly better. And that's saying something, so I'm going to personally put Lore of Tempest in D tier. It is very situational, but you almost never see it online for a reason. Alright, blown right through that. Lore of Ice. <sighs> Lore of Ice. A 25% slow on an area sucks. Ice Mane's Kiss kind of sucks. It's, it's okay, but it's not great. Frostblades is cheap enough, but... It's okay. It's not great. Death Frost sucks. Death Frost is terrible for its cost, and the cost is the important part. 14 wins of magic is a lot to pay. And the overcast just extends the cast range. Death Frost sucks. Crystal Sanctuary blows. You can't move. It's 14 wins of magic for 60% damage resistance. That is terrible. That is utter garbage. Compared to the lore of Yang's Jade Shield for one-third the wins of magic, and it's about the same damage resistance... Um, Crystal Sanctuary is just utter horseshit. Terrible. It's a terrible spell. And Heart of Winter is the only thing that keeps this lore alive. It's just what Final Transmutation used to be, except it doesn't hurt um, single entities. It just really fucks up infantry in an area. That being said, it is a good spell. It slows things so it's harder to get out of the area that it's killing you in. And kind of like the lore of Yang, this, spells, this lore is heavily carried by one spell, in my opinion. And the other spells are either shit or passable. Um, and for that reason, much like the reasoning on the Lore of Yang, I am going to put the Lore of Ice in, um, whoops, wrong program. I'm going to put the Lore of Ice in C tier. It's not that great. It's not that bad, but it's not that great. Alright, Lore of Ice joins the Lore of Yang in C tier. Alright. Moving on, Lore of the Great Maw. This is the first time we're going to be like overly positive. I guess we were pretty positive in Lore again. Um, Brain Gobla can be situationally useful. Um, a leadership debuff spell. It's not that great, but it's fine. Bull Gorger. It's pretty good. Four wins of magic for 24 melee attack. Yeah, that's pretty good. We like it. Toothcracker. Situationally useful. I don't love it, but I've seen some people use it. Bone Crusher is an excellent AoE armor piercing uh, damage clearing spell, and it's only. 10 wins of magic, very good. Troll Guts is one of the main things in the meta right now for the Ogres. It's just a nice healing spell for big monsters. They love that. And the Maw kind of sucks, um, but it's a big explosion area. While it sucks online, it's pretty good in campaign. So again, I don't hate it. I have nothing bad to say about the lore of the Great Maw. Oh, and an important thing to note is the lore passives, which we can't see in this screen. So I'll have to try to remember all of them. Lore of Yin sucks, Lore of Yang sucks, Lore of Tempest sucks. Lore of Ice is okay, but you don't spam any of the spells. So, so far, none of them matter. But the Lore of the Great Maw is actually... Um, its passive's pretty good, if I remember. Blood Gruel. Yeah, it's, it's regen. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, Lore of the Great Maw is very, very, very good. And I'm gonna put it... I'm tempted to put it S tier, but I don't actually think it needs that many nerfs. Um, I think there are spells that are... Spell lords that are better in it. So I think it, it's closer to S than it is to B, but I do think it lands in A um, with the Lure of Yin. Um, Lure of Yin actually ended up being pretty good. In my opinion. This is just my opinion, man. You can, you can differ if you want to. That's fine. All right. On to the lore of Slanesh. Lash of Slanesh sucks. It just... I have a very hard time seeing it do damage. It does okay. It, at least it's very cheap. It's the path... Uh, ooh, actually, talking about the army abilities, but we'll get to that. Um, Lash of Slanesh itself isn't that good. Acquiescence is actually very good. I think it's underrated. I use it a lot. I like it. It's a good... Just debuff for only six wins of magic. Hysterical Frenzy. 
Um, 40 melee attacks, good. Rampaging your own units isn't that good, so it kind of has its own drawback. I don't see a lot of it being used, but it is. Okay. It's fine. Pavane of Slanesh is good. Um, Rampages are nice. It does. It is. It says it's strong versus 25 units or above, but it's also nice to use on single entities, just because rampaging an important single entity and killing it is kind of a huge part of multiplayer battles. Um, so Pavane of Slanesh is very good. Selection Charge sucks now because units are responsive and you can actually dodge and i think it is extremely easy to dodge slicing shards but in campaign you can use it it's pretty effective for only 12 wins magic you could do massive 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 damage if your opponent's not going to dodge um and phantasmophoria i think it sucks for a 19 wins of magic net on a single target um with some minus leadership i don't think that's worth it that is very very expensive um but the whole lore overall is so good in my opinion and the army passive that comes with it is melee attack, which is very, very good. I think there's some leadership. I forget what the second part of it is, but there is melee attack, which is great. I know people usually take Lash and Acquiescence just to spam out the army passive. So Lord of Slanesh is actually going to get a higher rank than me, for me than a lot of people would have thought. Um, now, it does suffer. The reason I'm not going to put it in S tier is it's not overpowered. And the reason I'm not going to put it in A tier is it does significantly lack crowd clearing in a competitive setting where like people dodge stuff because slicing shards is really the only thing there that clears out any infantry or anything at all um and for that reason it's going to go in b tier but i do like the lore of slanesh overall it's good lore it's good lore it's unique it's kind of cool i wish the lash of slanesh was a little better then i would rate it more highly. If the Lash of Slanesh was as good as um, the Dragon Breath from the Lore of Yang, this would be an S tier lore, but it sucks, so it's a P tier. If it was somewhere between a B A, but I think the Lash of Slanesh is, this, is the key holding the Lore of Slanesh in B tier instead of A tiers, because that spell is really bad, and it's exactly what they need to be good. They need a crowd-clearing quick cast spell, and that one blows. Right? Right. Lore of Zinch. Uh, Lore of Zinch is very good, as you would expect from Zinch. Blue Fire is incredible, in my opinion, maybe too good, but recently it's been toned down a little bit. It doesn't seem to be as dominant, but then again, people who go into Zinch take Lords that are either so cheap that Blue Fire in them isn't such a big deal, or they're so armored up that the Blue Fire isn't such a big deal. Um, it is an extremely good sniping spell. Pink Fire of Zinch, un Zinch underwhelms me every time I see it, but it is cheap. It's fine. It's okay. Treason of Zinch I almost never see. It seems like it kind of sucks, but maybe in 16, leadership aura will matter more when we get mortals added to the game. So I think overall it could be fine. It's like Doom and Darkness overcasted. Um, I never see anyone using Glean Magic. It seems like it might just be too much wins of magic for the cost and the time um, it takes. But it could be okay. Maybe Zinch Firestorm sucks ass and no one ever uses it. It's very expensive and it's too random to really do anything good. And Infernal Gateway is a pretty decent station area of effect, kind of like a Pit of Shades type spell. Slur of Zinch, good. It's very good. It's very good, as you would hope from a Zinch Lord. Like, that's kind of like his whole... his whole deal. Boom. Lore of Zinch. Um, again, I'm reserving S tier for stuff I think is overpowered. I think the Lore of Zinch is just powerful. I don't think it's overpowered. I think it's fine. Um, I have no issues really with it. I think Blue Fire might be slightly overtuned, but I don't think the whole lore is overtuned. Not really. I haven't been having issues with it recently. That's my opinion. Runic magic for the dwarves. This does not cost winds of magic. Yeah, we do need to remember that. Rune Vigation's okay. Has a pretty long cooldown. Rune of Oath and Steel. Sucks, because armors... Uh, dwarves usually have so much armor that you don't need 30 more on anything. And it can kind of be good for Slayer Cheese, but again, it's a lot of money for Cheese. Rune of Wrath and Ruin in Game 2 was super good. We're going to be curious how good it is in Game 3, but presuming it's that good, it was a very nice thing. Rune of Slowness, some people liked it, but a lot of people shied away from it. It just wasn't worth the money, because like, when you cast a rune, in case you didn't know, when you cast a rune, it puts all your other runes on cooldown. Um, so... It's not like you can take this and another one and cast them side by side. Like, If you're casting that one, that's the one you want to cast. So in that case, most people like Rune of Wrath and Ruin. Um, or the next one we're going to get to. But Rune of Slonus, it's there as an option in case you need it. It's situational. Rune of Speed is the other one people usually went with. It's pretty good. Um, 
It's an area augment that gives dwarves melee attack, which usually they're just high melee defense, so giving them high melee attack as well can make them world beaters. It's very good. And Rune of Breaking, personally, I think it sucks. Um, I haven't seen a lot of it. It only affects one unit, and it gives armor centering to that unit, but... Okay, armor centering is neat if you get it for free. If you have to pay for it, then it's kind of meh. Um, Runic Magic's fine. It's okay. I think it's well implemented. I have no qualms with it, but that doesn't mean I think it's particularly strong. Rune Magic. I'm going to put it in C tier. Only because I think without Thoric Ironbrow, you didn't see a lot of Runesmiths. You saw... If they didn't pair with Thoric Ironbrow in game two, um, a lot of Dwarven armies would just go without runes, and I think that says something about their power level, if that makes sense. Like, Thoric was overkitted, but there was a basic rune caster. There was a runesmith and a rune lord, and they were almost never taken. So... Rune magic must not be that good if nobody was using it without Thoric. So I think that was more of a Thoric thing. Lore of Nurgle. I have mixed feelings. Miasma of Pestilence, minus 20 for melee attack is good, but it only affects one unit, so it's like, eh. It's fine. It's a fine spell. Steam of Corruption is actually super, super good. It's a really nice wind spell. does a lot of damage. Curse of Leper sucks ass. I thought it I thought it was good on paper, but then the more I use it, the more I talk to people about it. Um, it doesn't reflect nearly enough melee damage to make it worth it. It's like a lot of it will still get through, and it's dumb. Rance of Visitation suffers from the Death Frost problem. It's just way too expensive. It is way too much Winds of Magic for how much damage it does. It sucks. It's terrible. Light Boil sucks. It does very little damage to multi-entity models. It takes a very, very long time to cast. Um, it's expensive, it just sucks. And Fleshy Abundance is an extremely good healing spell. Um, extremely good. And it's AoE, the biggest thing about it is that it's AoE doesn't have a limited number of people you can hit, so you could clump your whole army into a blob and heal all of them, which is very good. Which is very good. Overall, it's a good lore. Um, the lore of Nurgle... Hmm... I think I'm gonna put it in B tier. I think, just because I have to compare it. So when you compare it to the lore of Yin, the lore of the Great Ma, and the lore of Zinch, I think all of those are better lores. And for that reason, I'm going to put it in B tier. Um, but I could see arguments for it being an A. I think Curse of the Leopard, Rance of Vegetations, and Blight Boil all sucking really hold it back. While Fleshy Abundance, um, Miasma of Pestilence, and the Wind Spell uh, is a Steam of Corruption or Stream? Stream of Corruption. I think all of them are so good, it drags it all the way up to B tier, even though three of its spells are dead weight. That's pretty good. Deliverance of Itza. This is technically in there, because I know if I didn't put it in there, people would get pissed at me. It only has three spells. They're all very easy to dodge. They're all just AoE damage. Um, that being said, it's excellent in campaign, so yay. Have fun within campaign. But online, it's pretty terrible. Um, that shit's going in F tier, and you know it. And you know it. Expensive, slow, and even when you hit, it's not like crazy amounts of damage. It's just good damage if you can hit somehow, some way. Which you probably won't. Lore of the Deeps. Um, it's Lore Passive is a map-wide Mortis engine. Which is pretty good if you can spam spells, but meh. Spiteful Shot is situational, but okay. If there's ethereal units, you can throw a Spiteful Shot on someone so they can just nuke it down. So that's okay. Tide Call sucks. It just doesn't do any damage for some reason, even though it should. Um, it's kind of a terrible spell. Fog of the Damned is a meme. On a different roster, it'd be good, but on the Vampire Coast, they just they don't have any melee units that can really take advantage. Like, all their melee defenses are so low, they usually get hit in the Fog of the Damned anyway. Dens of Dens and Deeps, a good summon. It's kind of expensive, but it's a good summon. You get some rotting Prometheans, but they'll eventually go away. Crackets Bull is a decent Vortex spell. It does okay damage, not great. And Van Geist Revenge is super slow and hard to hit. But if it does hit, it does a lot of damage. So like, meh. It's good in campaign. But the problem with this lore is not it, it in itself. Like, looking at it, none of those spells are really inspiring. They're not terrible. The reason that this is going to get such a low score, which it is, is because for that faction, you just need lore of vampires way more. You need the healing for more vampires. You need the summons a lot more for more lore of vampires. 
Um, and so by comparison with what the roster needs, Lore of the Deep is pretty bad. And that feels bad. If it was on a roster that didn't need Lore of Vampires, it could maybe be ranked higher. But keeping that in mind, it's a D-tier lore. It's not very good. Um, it's not garbage. It's not very good. Garbage is F-tier. D is like situational or you could meme with it and have some fun and not like throw the game but it's almost never the right option lore of nahikara is weird it's a lore passive is very 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 important for the roster if they need the healing um so every spell you cast with this does give some healing to your whole army which is nice curse blades is okay upgraded to get spells for large which is very good in cab fights um nick the incantation protection is pretty good, especially for spamming out for the Lord passive. Um, Wretched Smiting sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Incantation of Vengeance, I saw some stuff about it I liked, but I didn't get to play around with it too much before game two was over. I'll say that's an underrated spell, but it has potential to be good. Skullstorm sucks ass. Desiccation is okay. Minus 24, minus 24 is nothing to scoff at, but 15 wins of magic, you better fucking mean it. Um, overall, this is a fine lore. I don't have a whole lot to complain about. It lacks pretty significantly in crowd clearing, and that is going to dock at a couple points, but other than that, it's fine. I don't have any real issues with the lore of Nakara. It's okay. It's spammable. Cheap. None of their spells are really too crazy expensive that you can't really use them, so yeah, it's fine. B tier. And these, like I've said it a couple times, but people are going to be like, I'm very angry at you. It's like, yeah, you can have your own opinions about it. These are just mine. Skaven Lore of Stealth, on its own, it gives map-wide poison to the enemy, which is good. Skitter Leap's a fine spell. It's good for some cheesing. It's also just cheap. It's nice to have the option. Warp Stars is a really, really, really incredible sniping spell. It is fucking great. It's awesome. Armor of Darkness is okay, but it's really hard to use it effectively. Most of the time it just sucks. Veil of Shadows is terrible. Um, it's a really cool concept that just doesn't work. Uh, it pushes out some stuff, but not like bigger monsters or even cavalry, so some stuff can just push straight through it. I don't know. It's just a waste of your Winds of Magic for 12 Winds of Magic. Um, Brittle Bones, okay. It's very expensive for minus 40 melee defense, but minus 40 melee defense is nothing to scoff at, so it's hard, but like it's okay. And Black Whirlwind, it's a stationary of effect. It's expensive. It doesn't do very much damage. But Skaven, you kind of have to talk about all three of their lores to get any of them done. But we will go one at a time. But know that on its own, Lore of Stealth isn't that bad. It's also just not that good. So Skaven Lore of Stealth is going to go into C tier. Um, almost entirely carried on the back of Warp Stars and Brittle Bone. Brittle Bone, minus 40 melee defense, is really good for Lord Sniping. Um, especially if this this spell is, not spell, but this, this lore is paired with Deathmaster Snitch. You do have to remember it gives global poison. Like, every, every enemy on the map is affected by poison if you cast Warp Stars, which is four winds of magic over and over and over again. So that can be pretty good. Now, why wasn't it higher, or why didn't you see it all the time in Warhammer 2? Um, this lore exists. Lore of Plague is very, very good. Its lore passive is Vigor Reduction, map-wide, um, which is good. Plus with Filth, imbues some poison. It's nice to spam out if it's cheap. You almost never take it, because a lot of Skaven units have poison anyway. Pestilent Breath in Warhammer 2 was good. Now, a lot of these Breath-type spells from Warhammer 2 got nerfed pretty heavily, so we'll see how it does in Game 3, but it's still... Does okay. No armor piercing, but takes out a bunch of chaff if you need it as Skaven. Vermintide is excellent. Summoning clan rats is always super useful. Seven Winds of Magic is a steal um, for a clan rat to buy you some time to shoot some stuff. Five uses, excellent things. Wither. Air of effect, minus 30 armor. If overcast it, it is minus 60. Uh, especially with stone horns running around, maybe we'll need it, but Skaven have so much armor piercing they usually don't need Wither, but it's a nice little niche thing. It was good for dealing with stone trolls. Plague, I think, was, the uns was an unsung hero in game two. I started to use it a lot. I think Plague is pretty good. Um, it is very slow, so you don't have to catch your enemies 
unawares, but it's it's good in campaign. It's good stuff. I like it. And Pastoral Birth is niche but useful. Another summon, but this time Plague Monks. Blitzers uh, who can slam down your enemy. All that being said, Lord of Plague. This game Lord of Plague is A tier. Summons are very intense and having a single lore that can bring seven summons to the field is kind of wild. And then you give it a global vigor reduction and you give it some niche spells that can kind of be useful and then Pestilent Breath, which is just fine. It was in game two. We'll see if it is in game three. Um, that leaves the Skaven Spells of Plague up in the A tier, which is also why you didn't see the stealth that much. Even though stealth isn't that bad, Plague was just that good. Ruin. Ruin's an odd one. Howling Warp Gale is an incredible spell if your opponent's flying. But if they're flying, it's one of the best spells in the entire game. It's so good. Aerial Net for only 5 wins of magic. You can upgrade it to make the duration almost 30 seconds of an Aerial Net. It's wild. Warp Lightning in Warhammer 2 is okay, but I think in Warhammer 3 is going to be very good. Look at that range damage. 224 damage. 100% of it is armor piercing. If you think of a different lore lore of heavens recently we've been seeing a lot of ren and thunderbolt sure ren and thunderbolt does three times as much damage but that 100 percent armor piercing has been really helpful i suspect that the warp lightning will get similar treatment and will actually be pretty good at clearing out heavily armored infantry then again scape and i've never struggled with that so maybe they don't care death frenzy is a good spell only six months of magic the problem is is you just don't usually have any melee units that want to use it but in like a wolf rat brush it can be okay scorch is a good spell i like it just a nice little wind. Crack Skull sucks ass, never use it. And Flensing Ruin, debatable, but I think it sucks ass, never use it. Uh, it's too expensive for minus 30 armor and a pretty eh damage spell. So you would just take this for Howling Warp, Gale, and Warp Lightning, and Scorch. This lore is extremely heavily carried by Howling Warp Gale. <laughs> extremely. Um, without Howling Warp Gale, it would be C or D tier, I think. But with it, I do think Skaven Spells of Ruin is a B tier spell kit, just because that net is so freaking good. As far as the lore passive, I think it's it debuffs your leadership and yeah, it debuffs the enemy leadership and melee attack, so it can slow down their advance. Lore of Dark Magic usually sucks. Chillwind was pretty bad. Maybe it'll be better now. Who knows? Um, Bladewind was okay. Generally pretty bad. Word of Pain, not particularly excellent. It could be okay, but 8 wins of magic is a lot and it only affects one target. I kind of waste money on the minus 30 accuracy. You know what I mean? So if it was just minus 40 melee attack, it would be cheaper, but you also have to pay for the accuracy. Power of Darkness sucks. It does damage to you, but it gives you some power recharge rate. It's eh. I liked it on Malekith, but that's about it. Doombolt sucks for 11 wins of magic. It's pretty easily dodgeable by any unit that can walk. Um, and then Soul Stealer was pretty good, but who knows how good it'll be in game 3. Because they might have nerfed it like they nerfed Final Transmutation, so we'll have to see. But Soul Stealer was good. Assuming, assuming it's even remotely on the power level it was in Warhammer Two, again Soul Stealer is the one spell that carries this lore. I'll give it a B tier because it was such a blob punishment tool. Like if there was ever a blob, Soul Stealer just killed so many of them and it healed up your lord, usually Marathi or Malekith. So that was a pretty big deal. The Lore of Dark without Soul Stealer is very, very underwhelming. Probably a D-tier lore. Lore of High Magic. A lot of niche spells. Hand of Glory in general sucks. 24 melee attack's not bad for 4 wins of magic, but you're paying for the reload skill, which you don't really... Yeah. Apotheosis is good. It's a good little heal. The Can Cause Fear is also kind of worthless. Like, it's weird. A lot of these high magic spells like on paper sounds so cool but in practice it's just like hybrid spells aren't that good so the Ken Cause Fear is a little wasted but for only 5 wins of magic I feel like that's pretty good now 
Um, Soul Quench was a pretty good missile. Very high range damage, as you can see. Uh, I suspect it's going to be extremely good. Tempest, if you're in the air, slows you down and does a lot of damage. It's pretty good. Fiery Convocation takes way too long to cast. Otherwise, it does great damage if you can hit. So it's a good campaign spell, but otherwise, it takes way too long to hit. Um, so without a net paired with it, it's pretty bad. So I don't think this is a spell that's that good. And Arcane on Forging sucks because it is way too much winds of magic 16 winds of magic for a spirit leech type spell um not very good not very good at all 67 damage per second for 22 seconds for 16 winds of magic that's pretty crazy 34 to 67 mind you so it's not even guaranteed it's gonna be 67 it's not even guaranteed it's gonna hit so it's pretty bad thinking about all this it looks like these spells are going to be better so if it was just game two i wouldn't put them this high but it looks like apotheosis i mean with only five only for five wins of magic apotheosis can heal you it looks like solo quench is going to do more damage than it did before it looks like it's going to be better there's more flying units now so tempest will be better it still doesn't make me rate up super highly but it makes me rate him higher than i would have i'll give high magic c tier Having healing in general is very powerful. And then Tempest, Soul Quench are good enough to carry the, the rest of this lore up to C tier. And Hand of Glory could be okay. I mean, 24 melee attack for only 4 wounds of magic is pretty okay. C tier, I'm leaning on D tier. But Apotheosis is very good. Closer to D than it is to B. Alright, Lore of Life. Awakening of the Wood. Doesn't look like it does any damage still. Um, this, I always thought the spell was a waste of time in Warhammer 2, but a 12 second 45% speed slow might be worth it in some situations. Earth Blood is an incredible spell. Six Winds of Magic, big old heal, hits an area of effect. Now it can only hit a certain amount of units. Um, unlike the Nurgle spell. Shield of Thorns is... Ooh. It changed. Shield of Thorns used to be very good. Now if it's using this melee damage reflection, um, it might suck ass. But it used to be incredible. Oh, Flesh to Stone changed. Flesh to Stone used to be armor. 60% physical resistance for 8 wins of magic. That feels a little expensive for 60 physical resist, but that could be good. So, I don't know. I think both of these spells... I mean, Flesh of Stone wasn't that good because it was just armor, but, like, still. I think both these spells took a hit to their effectiveness. Regrowth is very, very good, and Dwellers Below is incredible, and it looks like on contact it's still going to do the damage per second plus the damage per second of the actual AoE, so it does double damage per second, because Dwellers Below is probably still going to nuke down some shit for only 17 wins of magic. So I think Earthblood, Regrowth, and Dwellers Below single-handedly carry this um, Awakening the Wood is also decent, but I think Shield of Thorns and Flesh of Stone got nerfed. And even with them getting nerfed, even with that, I'm still putting this lore in S tier. Um, lore of Life is some horse shit. Because you shouldn't, like, it's so weird to me that Lore of Life has Dwellers Below, which is one of the best cavalry specifically clearing spells, but it also clears elite infantry. Why do you get one of the best crowd clearing spells? on a lore that also has two different forms of incredible healing, and you have a nice slow and awakening of the wood if you're into that sort of thing. And in Warhammer 2, Shield of Thorns was amazing. It gave base weapon damage, and it gave physical resist and an AoE on charging. And the lore passive for the lore of life is army-wide healing. It's just incredible. Now, Shield of Thorns did get nerfed. Flesh Stone, Flesh Stone got nerfed. It was almost never taken anyway. Um, still, I think this is an S tier lore that needs to be seriously looked at. And I think the only spell, I think the only spell that needs to be looked at is Dwellers Below. Dwellers Below is some horse shit. Because you should take Lore of Life for life. You should not take Lore of Life to also kill everything. Like, think about it this way. We were just talking about the Lore of High Magic, right? If you're like, human boy, why do you think it's S tier? You're, you're a dumb, dumb idiot. If you look at the Lore of High Magic, it has worse healing than Lore of Life. And it has worse crowd clearing than the Lore of Life. And it's like, okay... So it's just worse. It's just worse than the Lord of Life. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the only thing it has over the Lord of Life is Soul Quench. It can snipe single entities. 
that's it. And even then, that's harder to do in game three, it seems like. Because we're on ultra unit scale, so it's a little harder to just like one tap things. And there's more healing in the game, so things can usually heal up after mistakes. Regardless. So Lore of Life is S tier in my opinion. Lore of Beasts has felt a little underwhelming. The ogres have it, so we have gotten to see some of it. Winston's Wild Farm is okay, it's always just been okay. Flock of Doom is it feels like it's a little bit better, honestly. It feels like it's better than it was. It's felt pretty okay. Amber Spear still kind of sucks because it can be dodged pretty easily, but it has its niche. Pens of Penetral Belt is okay. Not great. Curse of Honor is, is a good spell. It's fine. It's expensive, but it lowers a whole bunch of stats really well. And the Lore of Manticore's 20 wins of magic is very expensive, and Manticore's on ultra unit scale don't usually get as much done as they used to, but it's still very good. So Lore of Beasts overall is solid. I have no qualms with you, Lore of Beasts. I'm gonna put it in... Honestly, Curse, Manticore Summon, Flock of Doom, and... That are all pretty good. Oh, is it B or is it A? I think I'm gonna put it in B. Uh, but a Manticore Summon's going to be really good, because I have to factor in the Warhammer 2 factions. I'm going to put it in A. Currently in Warhammer 3, it's not picked very often at all by the Ogres. But because there's not a lot of low armor, low leadership factions for Manticores to abuse, but when Game 2 comes in, which is also what we're comparing, the lore of Manticores will be important again for sniping out. Um, like Empire and Bretonian and Skaven and Beastmen um lords and green skin lords and shit so yeah lord of beasts is gonna get bumped up even though right now the ogres don't use it very much lord of the wild devolve is weird three damage per second and some leadership and some melee attack okay i guess that could maybe be good i have to see it brace cream's pretty good you've seen it before vile tide is Okay, 23 damage with zero armor piercing looks like it might suck, but we'll have to see. Traderkin was very good against cavalry. We'll have to see how it is nowadays, but if it's anything like it was, it was good. Mantle of Gorok kind of sucks. It's 12 wins of magic to nerf yourself in the armor department. We get some melee attack and weapon damage for one unit, and it feels expensive. Savage Dominion summons a Cygor. Situationally useful. Lord of Wilds is actually pretty good. That's pretty crazy good. It was dominating at the end of Warhammer 2. Which I don't disagree with. So we'll put Lore of the Wilds right up there with Lore of Beasts um, in the A tier. Only reason it's not S tier is because I don't know the status of Traderkin, but if Traderkin's as good as it was at the end of Warhammer 2 and Devolve is better than it was, I mean, that could easily be S tier. I just don't think it will be, personally. The meta right now is extremely single entity and infantry heavy, in which case Trader Kin will suffer a little bit. So I don't know if it'll be that incredible. We're getting down there. Lore of Shadows is in the game right now, so we can compare it. Pendulum sucks ass right now, and Feebling Foe is always extremely good. No cost mystifying, mystifying Miasma has actually made a bit of a comeback as being a good spell. It's just slow and does some decent damage. The Withering kind of sucks. Occam's Mind Razor is situationally good for certain blitz builds because when you overcast it, you get AoE magical attacks with 50% damage increase, so it can be good. And Pit of Shades is incredible right now. It does tons and tons of damage, pretty quick cast time, not that high on um, Winds of Magic, and can kill a lot of units. So, Lore of Shadows, I think, is underrated. And I know I'm throwing a lot of them in A tier. Don't worry, it's about to calm right the hell down, but Lore of Shadows is going into A tier. Um, it used to be S tier when Pendulum was broken, but now that Pendulum's not broken, it's just good. It's just a good lore. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a good lore. Because you, you see lore of Slanesh more than you see lore of Shadows on Slanesh. That is true, but I think the lore of Shadows is more important to other factions than it is necessarily to Slanesh. So I have to think about all the factions that lore of Shadows is going to be on between game two and three. And 
there's a lot of them were enfeebling foes important for the Lord duels. Okay, we're getting there. Lord of Metal. Lord of Metal used to be better than it is now, but I think now it's suffering pretty heavily. Plague of Rust is a very good spell. It's 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 niche, but when you need it, you need it bad. It's really good against Stonehorns from the Ogres right now, so Plague of Rust is good. Cern Doom's fine. No complaints there. It's a decent little poke spell on some units. Glittering Robe sucks ass. 60 armor for 6 wins of magic for, for 12. You could add the... You could have a longer duration. It's pretty bad. Oh, it's added effect area. Nah, still pretty bad for armor. When most units in the game have armor piercing or something, and like, even then, base damage can eventually get through armor. Kenna's Golden Hounds, maybe there's an argument that this could have been an okay spell in Warhammer 2, but now that you can't aim vortexes, um, now that you can't aim vortexes, they suck really bad. Transmutation of Lead, it's expensive, minus melee attack, but it is an area, so it's okay. And Final Transmutation got severely nerfed. Um, from game two to game three. Now it's kind of always underwhelmed me, especially for the cost. It's okay, but it's super expensive to be okay. So I think the Lord of Metal took a hit. It used to be much better than it is now. Um, Plague of Rust is heavily carrying this lore. Everything else is just fine. I'm going to throw her down in C tier. I don't think the Lord of Metal is that good. And its army passive is pretty bad. Like some like 10% armor piercing and base weapon damage is like okay but you'd have to be spamming spells for that to be worth it so Lord of Metal is pretty bad Lord of Vampiros this one's weird Van Hell's Dance Macabre 24 melee attack 25% speed 4 wins of magic invocation hex 6 wins of magic to heal up units and it can resurrect dead combatants um, raise dead, four wins of magic to raise zombies, who have some of the highest health pools in the game. There's seven uses of it, and they are extremely sticky. Um, Gaze of the Gash is an incredible sniping spell, or at least it was in game two. We'll have to see it in game three. And uh, for seven wins of magic, that's very, very good. Curse of Years kind of sucks, and Wind of Death kind of sucks, especially in game three. I think Wind of Death is going to be useless. It doesn't look like it does that much damage. Um... And it's very, very expensive, usually quite dodgeable as well. This this spell kit is S tier, but I don't think it needs nerfs. Now why? Because I think the lore of vampires, both the vampire factions are balanced entirely around having the lore of vampires they don't have particularly good units um so while i think the lore of vampires is s tier i also don't think it should be nerfed because the factions without the lore of vampires are the worst factions in the game because they're balanced around the lore of vampires so it's like yes it's too strong but it's meant to be too strong so i think it's actually balanced like comparing it to the other magics yes of course it's one of the best ones maybe it is the best one but in the context of the situation it's used in, it's fine that it's the best one. Because that's the point. That would be my argument for Lore of Vampires. So I don't think it needs nerfs. I think it's fine. Lore of Death used to be very, very good in Warhammer 2, and in Warhammer 3, it has been riding the Stregi bus. Aspect of the Dread Knights, okay. Because there are most stuff in Game 3 right now is either already ITP or causes terror itself or something, so I don't know. It's not that useful. <sighs> Imbuing magic attacks is good, though. For only four wins of magic, it's fine. Spirit Leech has seen better days. It's not very good at sniping down characters anymore. It does, like, almost no damage, it feels like. For eight wins of magic, it's still pretty cheap, but it just feels like it does almost nothing. Um, it says strong versus character and single combatant, but again, I've been really struggling to see it even do anything. Doom of Darkness is okay. It's a decent little niche spell. Soul Blight is okay. It's a decent little niche spell. Purple Sun of Xerxes at the end of Warhammer 2 was very good, but now that they took out the ability to guide Vortex spells, Vortex spells suck again because you can't tell them where to go, and Purple Sun sucks ass. It's okay in campaign, not online. Fate of Buna is good at deleting one very, very expensive thing. We will have yet to see how it interacts with the Game 2 factions, but I think it could be very good at just deleting outright anything that's expensive. That all being said... 
this lore is far, far from its heyday. I'm going to put it, honestly, C tier? C or D? That's how I'm feeling now. C or D. I'll put it in C out of respect, but I'm not super thrilled with the lore of death right now. I think it's, it's struggling. Speaking of struggling, Lord of Fire. Lord of Fire was debatably S tier, if not A plus tier in the end of game two. What happened to you, my friend? Guess getting Fire Cloak, it's okay for some duelist lords like Archeon or something, but otherwise it's a little underwhelming. Fireball is a decent snipe spell, but again, with the higher health pools, Fireball sniping has been less important. With game two factions coming back in, it'll come back into prominence, but in game three, a lot of the game three factions are pretty adept at dealing with Fireball sniping. Flame Sword of Ruin is an extremely good spell after the addition of Game 3 where the demon factions are weak to magical attacks and flaming attacks have additional utility. Um, flaming Sword of Ruin's AoE effect is just extremely good. So now this is maybe the best spell on the war. Burning Head sucks ass now. It just does no damage and is, is god-awful. Um, piercing Bolts of Burning kind of sucks. It's expensive, takes a long time to cast, and it does less damage than, like, um, Thunderbolt does, or as Thunderbolt. And Flamestorm, again, at the end of Warhammer 2, is looking like an okay spell, but now that you can't guide vortexes in any way, shape, or form, it just sucks. So the Lore of Fire is pretty much just down to Lore of Fireball and Flaming Sword of Ruin. It's situational, it's expensive, it's slow. Um, I'm going to have a hot take, and y'all can eat my ass, but... Lord of Fire is D tier. I think in its current state in Warhammer 3, it is hot garbage. That's my opinion. Because they took two of the four spells that were good in game two, Burning Head and Flamestorm, and neutered them by mechanics or by stats. So then it's just Flame Sword of Rune and Fireball. And it's a little underwhelming. I can find my magic damage elsewhere, I can find sniping spells elsewhere. Lord of Heavens got a big buff. This was a pretty much meme lore in Warhammer 2. Harmonic Convergence is just good. It always has been okay. Like, it's it's a fine spell, no problems with it. Windblast sucks ass, and it sucks even more ass in game three somehow. Rant's Thunderbolt went from being an artillery sniping piece, which was okay, to now being honestly incredible. One of the best armored infantry clearing spells in the game. It is awesome. It is only six wins of magic. It's pretty quick to cast. It's very accurate. It is insane. How good Arena Thunderbolt is now. Curse the Midnight Wind, it's okay. I used it against Ogre Rush, but it's fine. It's not great. Comet of Cassandora is really, really awesome in campaign. It's not that great online. It takes too long to cast. People can usually dodge it, but it has some nice applications. It's only 13 wins of magic for how much damage it does. You can see that range damage it does is, is fucking insane and it's so good in campaign. I think that is worth a mention. And Chain Lightning. It's good in campaign sometimes, but again, with the Vortex spells being nerfed, and now you can't direct which way they go, Chain Lightning did take a big nerf, but the Ren and Slenderbolt change was so huge. I am bumping this spell, uh, not the spell, this lore, very, very high up in my regards. Um, I'm going to put it solidly in B tier, but that might seem a little weird considering how excited I just was to talk about it, but honestly, in Warhammer... Two, I would have put it down in D tier, so going from D up to B is a pretty significant change in my mind. <clears throat> the only thing Lore of Heavens suffers from and why it's not in A tier is it doesn't have any good single entity sniping, and it doesn't have any healing. So it just suffers in those aspects, but it is pretty good now. Like, it's a solid Lore of Magic that you should consider. Especially as, like, a supporting Lore of Magic, you know what I mean? Like, just take... Like for Cathay's sake, you just take an Astromancer and you take Uranus Thunderbolt and then you have another caster that does other stuff. It's pretty fine. Three left, we got this. Lore of Light. Files protection is okay, not great. Shem's Burning Gaze is fine. I'll have to see how its damage is, but it looks pretty meh, honestly. Uh, Light of Battle sucks ass. Never take it. Unbreakable for seven wins of magic. Yeah, who gives a shit? Um, Net of Am talk is incredible. It, don't hit it always has been incredible. And it's very, I mean, it's pretty cheap. Nine swims of magic for a net is honestly pretty good. Overcasting it is 18, but that does make it AoE. This is pretty big. There's a lot of builds entirely 
made around Net of Amtok, so such a good spell. Vernal's Time Warp, Augment of Area, giving 25, uh, 24 melee attack. That's pretty okay. All in one's magic's a little expensive. And Banishment sucks if you're going to take it on its own because it's 17 wins of magic, and again, you can't direct it anymore, where in game two, you could have directed it. So this lore did take a big hit in that Banishment can't be directed anymore. Um, and I don't know how good Shem's Burning Gaze is going to be, but it looks like it's not going to be great. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But Net alone does carry this lore into being viable. I'll put it in C. I'll put it in C. It's just, it is just the lore of Net, though. I'll be surprised if Shem's is good. Two left, and we're going to paint them red so that they go fast. We have the big wah, we have the little wah. Big, long, little wah. Gaze of Mork is a pretty good poke spell. It is better than Shem's Burning Gaze, it appears by stats. But I don't know how much I can trust these stats, but I will say Gaze of Mork was pretty good. Brain Burst Up is also pretty good. Seven Winds of Magic, very fast cast time. Does a good amount of damage. The Skork, Magical Attacks, 24 melee attack, 24 melee defense, seven Winds of Magic. Headbutt was actually pretty good. 32 damage, 7 wins of magic. So all those things are just super cheap. Here we go. Um, on paper, it was better than it was in practice. I had a hard time ever making it work in practice, but it can be okay. And Foot of Gork is a nice nuking spell for a meme. Not, partic well, not particularly good. So you probably want to stick to these first four spells. Um, also, Big Wall had a lore passive where the more you cast, the more wins of magic you can get. So the cheap spells also were heavily incentivized by that passive. Um, Lord of Big Wah. It's fine. It's fine. I'll put it in B tier. I like it. Comparing it to the other stuff in B tier, I'm pretty fine putting it there. It has a lot of useful spells. Yeah, Big Wah's good. Last but not least is Little Wah. Sneaky Stabbing. Kinda sucks. Four Winds of Magic. 24 melee attacks, okay, but like. There's not a ton of units that can use it that effectively on the Greenskin roster. Okay. Vindictive Glare, I'll have to see how it performs in Game 3, because again, a lot of the Magic Pestle spells feel like they got turned or tooled around. But um, Overcasting, it can do pretty good armor piercing. So I'm still going to say Vindictive Glare is overall a good spell. Gorkle Fix It is a really nice slow. No complaints there. Itchy Nuisance is a very nice AoE debuff spell, minus 24 melee attack. Um, ooh, it took a big hit. Jesus Christ. Okay, this went from being an area of effect cheap spell to being eight wins of magic for a single target hex. Okay, Itchy Nuisance sucks ass now. Night Shroud sucks ass. It's on, it's stock and unspottable, which other lores do for cheaper for 11 wins of magic. It's not AoE. Um, that sucks ass. And Curse of the Bad Moon. It was already kind of a niche spell that wasn't very good. And now if you can't direct it, it sucks ass. So honestly, this lore took a big hit as well. Itchy Nuisance being a real big problem. It's pretty much just Lord Vindictive Glare and Gork will fix it. Not making it all that good in my eyes. And I will personally put the Little Wah in D tier. Bim, bam, boom. There's your every Lore of Magic tier list. I hope this gave you some joy in some way. If it didn't, sorry for wasting your time. Uh, that's it for me. I hope you all have a good one. And these have been two tier list videos we did. I try not to do too much of this content because it can feel a little derivative. Like, oh, the YouTube meta is tier list. Tier lists are in, bro. So do some tier list, bro. Um, but I, I, I enjoy watching them. So I thought maybe I would make a few here and there. So hope you had a good time. See you around.